Good morning, First Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is the first Sunday of Pentecost here, and we will be celebrating the Holy Spirit and God's gift to us in a beautiful way this morning during our call to worship. But before we begin that, I wanted to make a few announcements about wonderful events and things happening this summer right here very soon. Volunteer, vac excuse me, Vacation Bible School volunteers are still needed. We are looking for VBS volunteers, and VBS begins on Monday, June 24th, and goes through Friday, June 28th. It's an awesome time to serve the community, to get to know new friends and old friends in new ways and connect, and it is a really fun time. My first big event that I was a part of was VBS last year when I first started my job here, and I loved it, and I got to meet so many wonderful people, and I hope you will consider this opportunity to really reach out to the community and serve as well. Please contact Holly or the office to sign up and learn more information if that is something you are able to do. Also, as we move into summer, I want to encourage you to remember your church family, even if you're away most of the summer, by considering to give online. We call it e-giving, and it is a great opportunity to take part in, and you can find out more information on, on this on our church website. It's a really meaningful way to continue to support the life of our ministries that really depend on God's grace, but also our continued and sustained generosity here. Also, last Sunday on the 2nd, we had our first ever Front Yard Fellowship that took place right out here. It was an awesome time where we got to fellowship and have fun with one another, invite friends, invite neighbors, and just be together as a church. We can be so busy doing that sometimes we forget that we are human beings. And so it was a great gift uh, from one of our small groups that had a wonderful free barbecue, music, lawn games for all ages. And it was a hit. And so I wanted to thank the small group that ran that. And please invite your friends, your families, any visitors to the next Front Yard Fellowship. It's going to be Tuesday, July 16th, same place, our front yard, from 6 to 8 p.m. Free barbecue, and if you can, please bring a side dish, a lawn chair, a blanket, and get ready to have another great time of fellowship. And also, a wonderful event that just happened on Friday was our 62nd annual Strawberry Festival. A huge thank you goes to every single volunteer who took time to host strawberries, set up, who did all the games and got so many fun things ready. It really takes a village, and we especially want to thank our leadership team, Leland and April Butler and Lori and Anthony Lamonica. They just gave of their time in, in a way that was above and beyond, so we really want to take the time to thank them if you see them. And last but certainly not least, our good friend Doug Derry will be installed as the moderator of West Jersey Presbytery right here on uh, June 18th at 7 p.m. here. Um, that's Thursday, June 18th at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. And it's going to be a wonderful time to celebrate his installment. And also we'll have a little party for that great event afterwards. So please mark your calendars for that. And now, friends, let us continue to worship God on Pentecost Sunday.
On the day of Pentecost, seven weeks after Jesus' resurrection, the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm in the skies above them, and it filled the house. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, and the, the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the waters, <clears throat> and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where, where it comes or where it goes. I baptize you with water but one more powerful than I is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. <clears throat> your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, and your old will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit upon all my servants men and women alike. Come to us, Spirit of God, breathe in us now. We sing together, Spirit of hope and light, fill our lives. Come to us, Spirit of God. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord, many of us follow our own desires or other people's advice instead of following the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to each of us to lead us into the fullness of our destiny and to the fullness of what Jesus died to give us. Our faith in Jesus gives us the promise of heaven, but God, we know that you wanna work all things together for our good in this life too. Lord, please help us understand that we can't be satisfied with, with receiving half of what Jesus died to give us. Help us to understand and follow the Spirit's leading so that we will get all that you would have for us. Help us also seek you for clear guidance to remain right at the center of your perfect will for us every single day. Amen. Let us affirm what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed as found in the front of your hymnal. Sisters and brothers in Christ, oh, please stand. <laughs> Sisters and brothers in Christ, tell me what you believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we've come to this time of confession, this is a time where we confess all the ways we have strayed from God when we have not listened to the Holy Spirit's quiet whisper in our lives. But this time of confession is not about accumulating guilt or shame. This is a time where we get to be reminded of God's never-ending love for us and how this kind of life-saving love invites us to respond to our God with genuine humility and gratitude. So together, let's say our prayer of confession. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we come confessing who and what we are. We are often unresponsive, for we are unafraid. When your Spirit speaks, we turn deaf ears, for we fear what you might call us to do. When your Spirit touches our lips, we close our mouths, embarrassed to speak your word. When the wind of the Spirit blows, we close the windows of our hearts, afraid the breeze will disrupt our ordered lives. Forgive us, Lord, for our closed minds, hearts, and lives. By your loving grace, open us fully to all that you have for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Those who enter in the life of Jesus Christ no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. A new gracious power is in operation. The Spirit of Jesus, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing us from the tyranny of sin and death. Amen.
You may be seated. <clears throat> Remember that the day of Pentecost began with a prayer meeting. 120 believers were gathered in the city of Jerusalem in a house, and there they were seeking God in prayer. And there the Holy Spirit of God came upon them with a power they had not known before, but a power in the person of the Holy Spirit that abided with them the rest of their lives. We are in the same place and position to seek God with humility in prayer. As we prepare to pray as a people, let me remind you of letters of well-wishing that will be sent out from our church this week. And let me ask you not only to sign the letters, but also to pray for the names of those we're sending letters to. A young man, a boy from our community, um, um, Alon Murray, sixth grade boy from Morristown, was hit by a car recently, and we're praying for him and his family in his recovery. Joanne Holliday has suffered the death of her husband, Tom. Joanne is a friend of Allison McKay, one of our office administrators. Praying for Kyle, an eighth grade graduate of Urban Promise in Camden, Kyle is a special friend of our church. We're praying also for Dennis and Susan Walker, Wycliffe missionaries, who have been staying in our missions house for several months. They'll be moving and moving on to what God has for them next. We want to pray for them as they go. Finally, please remember Linda Thorpe in your prayers. Linda is the mother of Adrian Barr. And a week ago, Linda suffered a massive stroke. She's now recovering, and she is recovering, at Lord's Hospital in Camden. The family learned also that there has been the spread of cancer to Linda's brain. So there's a lot that's happening, a lot that the family needs our support and love, and we need to be praying for wisdom and strength for them in these days. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray together. Father Almighty, everlasting God, we declare your praises on this Pentecost Sunday. Years ago, you spoke with power to those who did not know you, those who were in rebellion, those who had rejected your son. 3,000 people heard your voice and were forgiven, renewed, and filled with the Spirit. Do it again, Lord. Would you please come to us today with the same power of your Spirit? We pray for the church, your church, wherever she is gathered today, in the great cities of the world like Mexico City and Lima, Peru, or in the villages of Africa and Haiti. We ask your blessing upon those churches we love as we pray also for pastors that we know. Particularly, we pray for our own congregation this morning. Grant that our witness to Jesus Christ as Lord may be sure that our teaching to our children, youth, and adults be apt, that our fellowship be open and saturated with the love of Christ, and that our doctrine be sound. We pray, Lord, for those whom we love who do not know you, or those, Lord, who have wandered from you. And we ask that we would have power to be your witnesses with our words and with our lives. Lord, please keep shaping us as your people through the ways we've named as our own so that we may serve you faithfully and energetically to accomplish your will and purposes among us. Grant today that the gospel, the good news of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, be proclaimed today. May many, including some here today, give all of themselves in surrender to Jesus. May salvation, Lord, come to all you call today. Father above, we pray for our nation and our leaders. We ask wisdom for President Trump, leaders in Congress and members of the Supreme Court. We pray the same for Governor Murphy, for Senators Booker and Menendez. Gracious God, our strength and our hope, we pray for those who suffer, for those who endure the daily struggles of poverty, for those who are burdened by debt, who live with the burden of addiction. Particularly today, we pray for Alan and Kyle, these two young men. 
We commend Dennis and Sandy to your good care. We ask that you would comfort Joanne. We pray for Linda Thorpe and for her family and continue to pray for Katie Laundress and for hers. And we offer finally ourselves, Lord, may your spirit rest upon us too. For we pray these things together in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just before we receive this morning's offering, I wanted to take a moment to recognize that Kelly Lipinski, our pastoral associate, has marked her one-year anniversary with us. And I know I can speak on behalf of all of you to say, Kelly, we are so grateful for your life, your faith, your ministry, and we are just so blessed to have you in our midst. We have some flowers for Kelly, and I hope that you'll just thank her and continue to bless her in all the ways that you have. So friends, let's now commit to being a generous people as our ushers come to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. The blessings that these wonderful ushers hold in their hands, they are things that we have never possessed, but we are merely returning back to you. 
We thank you for the gifts that you have freely given us with your deep, abiding grace, and that we are your people, and so therefore we give them to you, O Lord, and we pray a blessing over them. We ask that these gifts will instill hope in people's lives where there previously was none, that these gifts will offer people light and illuminate the truth and love of you, O Lord, in people's lives where there was previously darkness. And we ask that these gifts may give people life where there was previously death. Lord, we thank you that you are a generous God and that you model for us what it means to be your generous people. So we ask that these gifts may bless all whom receive them and that they will continue your ministries throughout the world, throughout our country, throughout our community, throughout hearts everywhere. We love you, Lord, and ask these things in your son's name. Amen. I have studied Spanish, but I cannot say that I speak Spanish. Oh, I know how to order from a menu in Spanish. I can ask directions to a town or to the bathroom. I could ask you about the basics of your life. What is your name? How old are you? How many children you have? How you're feeling today? Right now, that's about as far as I can go with my Spanish. A few years ago, I spent an afternoon with a close friend of mine named Jorge Santizo and his wife Adriana, who were visiting from Guatemala. Jorge is deeply involved with the Spring of Hope mission in Guatemala. This was a mission partner that my former church supported for more than a decade. Jorge is perfectly fluent in both English and Spanish. His wife Adriana was raised as a Spanish speaker, speaker and speaks a little bit of English. She probably knows more English than I know Spanish, but not very much more. I was standing with Adriana and Jorge inside the front door of the Lambertville station when Jorge got a call. So he walked into the parking lot while Adriana and I stood beside each other in awkward silence. You see, I had already used most of the Spanish, really all of the Spanish that I knew on her. I had said hello. And I told her how glad I was to meet her. I knew the names of her family. I wasn't going to ask her her age, and I knew where the bathroom was. There was plenty I wanted to say, but I lacked the vocabulary and the grammar to say it. I wanted to ask her what she thought of New Jersey. I was interested in learning more about her children. I wondered what her dreams were for Spring of Hope mission in Guatemala, and I wanted to tell her how much I love that mission. But I couldn't say any of those things. So we sat, stood silently, smiling at each other for a few minutes until Jorge, our interpreter, returned. If you have ever traveled in a country where you don't speak the language, you know how isolated, disconnected, and lonely you can feel there. You're in a sea of words. Not one means anything to you. The day of Pentecost was a day full of miracles, the sound of a mighty windstorm high in the air, and then later the Holy Spirit filling 120 followers of Jesus. Those same believers then spread out into the streets of Jerusalem with tongues of fire dancing over their heads. But I would say that the most important miracle that happened on Pentecost that day in Jerusalem was that people heard in their own language the wonders and the grace of God. Our scripture lesson this morning is the account of Pentecost as it's recorded for us in the book of Acts chapter 2. This can be found on page 119 in your pew Bibles. I encourage you to find a Bible and follow along with me as I read. What the Holy Spirit did at 9 o'clock in the morning was to give the gift of speech to 120 disciples. 
But the Spirit also gave the speech of gift, the gift of understanding and correction, the gift of repentance and change, the gift of salvation and new hope. So hear now the word of God as it is found in the book of Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, They were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthenians, Medes, Eliamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Would you pray with me for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord this morning? Let us pray. Now, Spirit of God, would you move among all of my friends here today? Would you speak in a voice that will be recognizable? Would you speak with power to convict us of our great need for you? Would you speak the truth that would cut through all the chaos and clutter and misinformation we live with day by day, including information about who we really are? And most of all, Lord, would you speak a word of hope, a word that would be filled with your power to do what we could never do on our own, for that which we could never even imagine could happen within us and through us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Question, is Pentecost a Christian or a Jewish holiday? Trick question, it's both. The word Pentecost is a Greek word referring to a Jewish holiday known as the Festival of Weeks. The Festival of Weeks is a harvest festival. In Palestine, there are two harvest seasons acknowledged and that happened to this very day. There's an early harvest season happening sometime in May or June and the festival of Pentecost or the festival of weeks celebrates that first harvest happening sometime in May or June. It is 50 days after the day of of, uh, of the, the Passover festival and then there's another harvest festival that happens in the fall. The rabbis taught that Pentecost was also the day when God's people celebrated the giving of God's law to Moses. And the rabbis taught that when the law was given, that Moses spoke it in 70 languages, all the known languages at that time. The law of God was very much given for his people, but it was also meant for people everywhere. So let's imagine that you're in Jerusalem on that Sunday You're there 
with thousands of other people. Jerusalem, a compact city, was filled to the point of overflowing with thousands of pilgrims who were there. You've come with your friends to worship God, yes, but it's also a bit of a party atmosphere because that's the nature of a harvest. Now, you are not a Hebrew speaker by birth, and you struggle a little bit with the Aramaic that's also spoken in the city of Jerusalem, but you know just enough to get by. When you walk into Herod's temple, a grand marvel of architecture that dominates the city of Jerusalem, if you focus carefully and if the priest speaks slowly, you'll understand most of the Hebrew that is spoken. It's nine o'clock in the morning, and you and your pals are walking down a very narrow street in the city of Jerusalem when suddenly a sound startles you. It's the sound of a windstorm, actually what sounds like a tornado, although the skies are clear. That gets your attention. But then what happens next causes you just to stop in stunned silence because there's a house right next to you. The door is open and out come streaming people. And at first it looks like their heads are on fire, but they're not. But then they begin speaking in languages and you and your pals look at each other and you say, what is going on and what does this mean? Those who came out were Galileans. They were known by both their dress and their speech, but they are now speaking a language that reminds you of sitting in your mother's kitchen and hearing her say to you how proud she is. That's the voice that you're hearing from one of these, these believers who are now standing next to you, but they're not talking about home or you. They're talking about the power and the work of God they're telling you about Jesus Christ. They're telling you about who he was that you misunderstood, but you're hearing it in your own language. And not just your own language, but your own accent. So let's say there was somebody from deep in Mississippi. They would have heard someone speaking with a southern twang that day. Or someone who grew up in South Philly, someone thick, speaking with a thick Philadelphia accent, announcing the good news of Jesus Christ. See, the gift of Pentecost is the gift of speech, but the gift of Pentecost is also the speech of gift. It is a language given to you to tell you the wonderful news of God in your own language. That language tells you that you are welcomed by God. Because God wants you to hear every syllable and to understand it in your own language. The gift of Pentecost is the gift of speech, but the gift of Pentecost is also the speech of gift. It's the speech that helps us understand how wrong and how far off we can wander from a right understanding of God because that's what humans do. We get lost. We get confused. We need help to understand who God is. But we also need to understand that God is not out to get us. God's not out to smash us. God is out to love us and to welcome us back. And so we hear on Pentecost in our own language the gift that you can return. The biblical language is to repent. It means that you're able to come back and live life differently with God's help because God just loves you so much. And God welcomes you back as his daughter and as his son. That is the speech of gift that is heard on Pentecost. More than that, though, the Holy Spirit that filled those ordinary men and women, just like you, just like me, fills you to accomplish a cosmic, world-altering purpose. That's what God has in mind for the church. That's what God has in mind for this church. And that's same power that sent those folks out into the street, most of whom couldn't read a book. They became witnesses for God, and the Roman Empire was altered, and we're here today because they witnessed to the miracles of God on the streets of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. The gift of Pentecost is the gift of speech, but the gift of Pentecost is the speech of gift. 
Father Gregory Boyle works with gang members in Los Angeles. He's been doing so for 30 years. In an interview, he once spoke about the late great child psychologist Ann Miller, who used to speak about the need that all of us have in our lives for what she called enlightened witness, witnesses. Ann Miller says that enlightened witnesses are those who come to us with careful, attentive love, kindness, and mercy, and who help us return to ourselves, the people that God made us to be, the people that God calls us to be in Christ, the new creation. Father Gregory Boyle was talking about this need for enlightened witnesses, which is really what those disciples were on the day of Pentecost. And he told the story of one of the gang members, uh, uh, what he calls a homie, he calls all these guys homies, a homie named Louie. Louie was a 16-year-old kid, and uh, Gregory Boyle says of Louie that everyone thinks the same of him. He's kind of a pain in their neck. He's whiny, and he's complaining, and he's difficult to be there. They love him, but it's not easy to love Louie. Louie works, said uh, Gregory Boyle, at his, uh, his company, although he says, to use the word, the verb work is a little bit strong when it comes to Louie. He doesn't do an awful lot of work. Father Gregory Boyle says that a lot of these gang members ask him for a blessing, but they don't say, Father Boyle, would you give me a blessing? What they say is, hey, G, would you give me a bless? So Louie, while he's sitting and talking with Father Boyle, complaining about something else, says to him, hey, G, would you give me a bless? And Gregory Boyle said, I'd be glad to. And so Louis got up and came around the desk. This was the drill, and Louis knew it. And he stood and he bowed his head. Now, it was Louis's birthday two days before, and Father Gregory Boyle knew that. So he said, give me an opportunity to say something that I really wanted to say to Louis. With hands on his shoulders, he said, Louis, I want you to know how thankful I am for you. And that on the day you were born, the world became a better place. And I am blessed to know you and to consider you as my son. And then he said, I can't believe I went on to say this, but he said, Louis, sometimes I got to tell you, you're a pain in my rear end. And Louis said, looking back at Father Boyle, feelings mutual, G. <laughs> Gregory Boyle said, you know something in that moment, there was a sense of Louis being returned to himself kid who struggled with trauma and things that none of us could even possibly imagine. But in that embrace and in that word of blessing, something was returned to Louis that perhaps was lost, but something was also returned to Father Gregory Boyle, who was in the act of blessing, gang member. My friends, this is a table of returning, a table where we come back to find ourselves as God designed us, as we are remade in Christ. And so today, I want to invite you, in your own language, to come, to be known and blessed, to be changed, to experience repentance, to know the love of God, to return to the person God calls you to be. Friends, let us prepare for the Lord's Supper by singing together hymn number 298, Come, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove.
may be seated. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When human sin scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced us as your own. Therefore, we thank and praise you with all your people in every time and place. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear now the words of institution as they are recorded for us by the Apostle Paul. He wrote, For I received of the Lord that which I delivered also unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, the night before he gave his life for you, took bread, and having blessed it, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat in memory of me. In the same way also after the supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do declare the Lord's death until he comes. The apostle tells us to examine ourselves For these are gifts that should never be taken lightly nor for granted, but only out of a deep sense of our need and a great sense of humility for all that God has given to us. Let us pray. And now, Lord God, we sit before you, a people in desperate need. So, Lord, we open wide our mouths and ask that you would fill it with your truth and your grace, your forgiveness and your mercy. Lord God, we ask that your spirit would move over these gifts, setting them aside from the common to the sacred use that you would intend. And Lord Jesus, I ask that you would meet all of my friends today and me as well, that you would speak deeply into our lives, your salvation, your hope, your truth. For we ask and pray these things together in your name and for your sake. Amen. This table does not belong to First Presbyterian Church. It belongs to God's people everywhere. And so today, if you have heard the voice of God in your own language, and you realize that your heart has been cut open, then by all means, receive what the Lord God has for you today. This morning, you will be served both bread and cup in your pew by our elders. When you are served the bread, please eat it. When you're served the cup, please hold it and we'll drink together. I also want to encourage you to remind one another with these words, the body of Christ broken for you because he loves you, the blood of Christ shed for you because he loves you. Please be aware that there's a gluten-free option in the center of each of the trays of bread. Friends, these are the gifts of God. For you, the people of God, let us keep the feast. Thank you, Cecilia.
to see the body of Christ broken for you because he loves you. Gene, the body of Christ broken for you because he loves you. And Mike, the body of Christ broken for you because he loves you. Thank you. blood of Christ shed for you because he loves you. Gene, the blood of Christ shed for you because he loves you. Mike, the blood of Christ shed for you because he loves you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of him. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have nourished us yet again so generously and so faithfully. Lord, we ask that what Jesus has given to us today, his very self, that we would be feeding upon him now and as we leave our worship today and in the days, weeks, and months to come. Lord God, we thank you for each other, for our church, and Lord, we pray for the witness you've given us to carry out. Lord, as you have loved us, may we love one another, and may we go forth into the world to serve you with joy and gladness always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Jesus offers an invitation for us all. Listen to Matthew 11:28. 28. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Are you weary, tired, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders? Jesus invites us to come to him, and he will give us rest. This week's way is for you if you're tired. Embrace rest. It's found printed on the front of your bulletin. Embrace rest. Make time in your week to step back from your work, school, and stressful demands. Since Christ has freed us, we no longer have to be obsessively driven. Take a walk, play, nap, meet up with friends, share a meal, or just take some time in solitude. Rest is God's idea. Listen to what Genesis 2, 2 and 3 says. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day, and he declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. If I'm honest, rest at times is elusive to me. It just does not come easily. It's like I have an internal motor that never shuts off. And as a mom, there are times I feel guilt when I rest. I know myself, and if I'm not careful, busyness can become a pattern in my life. I know I'm not the only one. But here in Genesis is verse, God rested from all his work. Rest was his idea from the beginning of time. And I wonder if God thought rest was so important to include it right at the beginning, who am I to think that I don't need to rest? I need to practice rest. I need to make time for it, and I can always tell when I need it. And so can my family. I get cranky, anxious, and I'm not nearly as creative as I want to be. I need to be reminded that God in his grace and mercy offers me an abundant life, and as part of this abundant life, he invites me to come and rest in him. I do not do it alone, for he is with me. He's with me in the morning when I steal a moment away with my cup of coffee and I watch the woodpeckers in the backyard. He's with me when I close the door on my art room and I pick up my paintbrush and I ask him to guide it across the canvas. And oh, the glorious walks and talks that we have in the morning. He's there too, giving me my rest. These are the restful times that I get to meet with Jesus and renew my body, my mind, and my spirit in him. Your restful times don't need to look like mine. I've had to work at mine, and believe me, I still am moment by moment. In fact, I haven't been in my art room in quite a while. But I encourage you to find moments of rest and to connect to Jesus. Just be still in his presence in a way that connects with you. And try to extend those moments into hours, maybe even a day. He'll be there with you too. Because he said, come, and I will give you rest. And I'm gonna leave you with this. I didn't realize that I needed rest until my husband pointed it out over and over again. He would often comment about how I couldn't sit through a television show without getting up to do something like wash or making the bed. I'm sure a lot of women can relate to that. But one day he said this to me, he said, you know, honey, you really need to remember, you're a human being, not a human doing. Thanks be to God that he created me as a human being, and he gives me the freedom to rest in him. Amen.
Friends, I invite you to stand and join hands with those on either side of you. This is our tradition. This is how we leave this worship service to go and serve God wherever God sends us. So would you offer a prayer of blessing upon the hands you hold. After the benediction, would you greet one another with gestures of kindness, peace, forgiveness, and welcome. Let us pray. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord's face shine with joy because of you. And may the Lord look deeply into your eyes and grant you peace. And may that peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds at rest in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.